Hello! Welcome to my channel. We're talking about self-love today and how to love yourself after you've been through that horrific, toxic, narcissistic relationship. OMG. I know it's a challenge and I'm going to help you today on how to love yourself after narcissistic abuse. Hello, my name is Denise Kavaleskis, and if you are new to my channel and any of my videos you find value, please smash that like button, comment below on topics you'd like me to cover, or comment on the video you're watching, and or subscribe. Because what you do by doing one of those three or all of those three things is you help people like you and I who've been through these toxic relationships and need help, need this advice, to, to, for me to grow my channel and for them to find me and this information, that's what you do. All right, let's get into it. How do you love yourself after narcissistic abuse? So if you don't know my story, um, little backdrop, I was in a toxic relationship for 22 years. I have two children with him. And um, in 2000, well, the first time was 2012, 11, excuse me, I picked up and left and moved three states away to here, North Carolina. I was here for three months before the Hoovering started and the I love you, we have 22 years together, let's try to work it out. I was very scared because that was the first time that I had ever been on my own, right? Because these relationships are very codependent. And so I let the fear take over of, oh my gosh, I won't be able to make it. And even though I had a job, even though I had an apartment, even though all my bills were current, even though I even had money in the bank, like a little nest egg, even though I had all of that, fear still took over and told me to go back, go back to him, go back to Florida. So I did. Um, I was there for eight months in total and then came back here again in 2012 and have never looked back. So during the 22 years of being in that relationship, there was a lot of traumas and dramas. And, um, and so I didn't learn to love myself until I was out of that relationship for like two years. So that story goes is that First of all, there's, there's a lack of self-love going into this relationship, right? Because it's a lot of times it's like, I want to help save this person so much so that I sacrifice myself, which is a lack of self-love. But then being in this type of a relationship for one year, two year, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, that self lack of self love diminishes every single day you're in that relationship so imagine going in with the lack and then being there for 22 years and whatever time that you were there it's the same for you so what needs to happen and this is the foundation of everything this is this is ground zero this is the level where you need to start your healing journey is love yourself. Love, 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 love yourself. Be patient with yourself. Be kind with yourself. Stop beating yourself up for the mistakes that you've made. You made a mistake. That's what life is about. We make mistakes. But let me ask you this. Does it serve you to beat yourself up for that one mistake that you made over and over and over and over again? Or would it be better if you recognize the mistake that you made, learn from the mistake that you made, and move on from the mistake that you made so that you never repeat that mistake again, right? So I wanna give you some tips on how you can start this journey of self-love after being in a narcissistic abusive relationship. So first I want you to know that you've been through a real show okay so i want you to just like recognize that that 
yes, you were in an abusive relationship. You were emotionally abused. I know for me, I was emotionally abused, mentally abused, financially abused, sometimes physically abused. So I just want you to recognize that. However, I don't want you to stay there, okay? So the thing about emotions is it's really good to recognize it, but it's not healthy for you to stay there. That's what the not, not healthy part is. So you want to start to, okay, all right, Denise, you've been through this experience. Now you're out of it. Now, here's what happened. I started to date, and I started to date men who were a replica of my ex, except for maybe a handful. Those guys I pushed away. The guys that I drew in and like actually dated or had some type of a relationship with were the ones who had characteristics of my ex. And even though part of me was saying, oh, that ain't happening again, I still continue to communicate or date or have a relationship. So what needs to happen is once you recognize this, you start to go in and love yourself. So I know for me, when I was in the dating, when I was dating, I was being very, um, not me. I was being promiscuous. I didn't care. I was being reckless. I was just really sacrificing my mind, body, and soul from because of the experience that I had been through until the patterns started to just like scream at me. So it came down to a relationship that I had for about two months with somebody. And the relate, I ended the relationship and he couldn't take no. So he made up a story and the story that he made up was almost exactly the experience that I had been through with my ex in Florida. And that was the moment that I was like, Denise, this is happening for a reason. This is not a coincidence. This person doesn't know. Not only does this person not know who and what you've been through in, the, in Florida, but you never spoke about this. You never told this person the situation that happened. So how would this person know how to repeat or, or replicate this almost same exact scenario? They don't. It was life. It was life showing me, Denise, this is what you need to look at. This is what you need to heal. And that's what I did. So the first thing that I did was, and, th and I'm not pushing you to do, I'm just sharing with you my experience. The first thing that I did after I realized this was I stopped dating. I do recommend that part. Stop dating. They're off all of the dating sites. And I said, um, that's enough. Because I keep repeating, I keep attracting the same type of, no. So stop. Then what I did was I hired an empowerment coach, a woman's empowerment coach. That's what I hired, who I hired. And I focused on me, complete focus went on me, which I thought was going to be in her program, which was a three month program. I thought, okay, I'll take three months and I'll just focus on me for three months. <laughs> that three months turned into another three months, which turned into another three months until 18 months. When I started to learn about myself, when I started to learn what my triggers meant, when I started to learn the things that I was actually doing, I started to forgive myself, forgive the past, be kinder to myself, be more patient with myself. And those are all aspects of loving yourself, right? Those are all forms of loving yourself. So that's where you want to start. You want to start with loving yourself. There's so many things that you can do to start this process. Let's, let's take some simple ones for you to start with, okay? You can start with just repeating in your mind, I love myself. Now, if that feels too icky, too heavy for you, you can edit the words and you can, you can say something like, I am willing to love myself. 
I'm willing to love myself. You can also start with sticky notes around your house. You can put them in the mirror that you look at when you wake up in the morning or as you go to bed, when you're brushing your teeth, on the doors, that going out to the door, you can have a sticky note. Coming in, you can have a sticky note. On your phone, you can put, I love myself, or I'm willing to love myself, or some type of a self-love affirmation that resonates with you. Those are some tips that you can start to do right away. Right away. And so when you're ready to get therapy, get counseling, get coaching, whatever it is that you choose for yourself, I highly recommend that you, it like almost like shopping for the perfect dress. I encourage you to feel into your body when you're speaking to this person, therapist, counselor, coach, whatever it is, and really like tap into what your body is telling you. Because your body is always communicating with you. It's always speaking to you. It's always messaging you. So if you get on the phone, for example, if you get on the phone, like for me, when I was searching for a therapist or a counselor, I think it was marriage counselors, I would always um, gravitate towards females. Never a male counselor. Um, and that's just my own preference. That's just because um, I, I feel more comfortable with a female, with a woman, um, counselor, therapist, whatever. All of my coaches are female, have been female. I just feel more comfortable that way. Maybe you feel more comfortable with a male's perspective. Totally up to you. My, my invitation to you is just to feel into this person that you're about to engage your most deepest thoughts, like to help you heal. You want somebody that you really resonate with, okay? Um, even starting here on YouTube is great. So this, I get this a lot in my Facebook group that's called Life After Narcissism. I have over a thousand people in there right now. Um, it's constantly growing which excites me. And so when you get into the group, there's like a little questionnaire that I ask. I think it's just like two questions. And I ask, what do you struggle with the most? What do you want me to answer? And so I write it down. I take pictures of it and I write it down. And I write down the person's first name so that it's relatable when I'm talking about it. So this was a woman named Carolyn who struggles with loving myself again. That's what she put, loving myself again. Now, everybody who's in the group has been or is still trying to get out of a toxic relationship, a narcissistic relationship. So I get this a lot, loving myself again. So Carolyn said it, Liz said it, Michelle said it, Amy said it, I get it all the time. And so if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see that I word it differently, but I do talk about this topic all the time because I get it all the time, so I kind of switch it up, change the title a little bit so that it'll attract different people who need to hear this. How do I love myself again after these toxic relationships, after these narcissistic relationships? So loving myself again starts with, like I said, the affirmation in your head, I love myself, repeat that a thousand times a day. Um, like I said, if it's too heavy, you could say, I, I'm willing to love myself. The other tip that I gave you was sticky notes everywhere, mirrors, doors, everywhere. Have it, have a, a good affirmation on your phone. Louise Hayes great. She has a lot of um, fun affirmations. So those are the ways that you can start to love yourself. The third one is to be more patient and kind to yourself. What is that conversation that's going on inside of your head? What are you saying to yourself? Are you being nice to yourself or are you beating yourself up? Are you being patient with yourself or are you rushing and being impatient with yourself? So I encourage you to start to notice what conversation is happening inside of your head 
And when you do notice yourself being a little hard on yourself or whatever, whether it's the past or current, just take a step back and be kind to yourself. Be a little more patient. This is also ways and forms of self-love. Okay, so I hope that helped. Um, what I'm gonna do is in the description, I'm going to leave the link if you would like to connect, if you're at the point where you are ready to hire somebody, a coach to help you, I will leave my scheduling, scheduling link in the description. So just click that and it'll be there. Um, if you're not, that's totally okay. If you're just searching on YouTube, I, that's great. Um, but whatever it is, if you also, if you're on Facebook and you would like to get in the life after narcissism Facebook group, I will leave that link in the description below as well. You can just click on it. You'll see the little questions that I ask. It's super quick. Um, and you can jump in there. I also do a lot of videos in there. I do webinars in there. Um, lots of interaction in that group. And the other beautiful thing is you'll be surrounded by other people who have been through the same thing as you, which is very supportive and comforting to have that around you. So much love. So there's another way that you can love yourself. All right, my loves, have an amazing weekend. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.